Before you ever hire a real estate professional, there are certain questions you should always ask to ensure you're hiring someone that's a great fit for you. Hi, this is Ryan Cook, broker owner of HomeSmart First Class Realty. Now there are three questions I see on lists that I want to address up front because they're not particularly relevant, yet authors like to make them seem important. Number one, how many homes have you personally sold? Why is this not important? For starters, in today's team environment, these numbers can be incredibly inflated. Second, newer agents may say how much their broker or company have sold to cover for their lack of experience. Third, how many times you've done something has no correlation to how good you are at it. I've been an avid bike rider for over 40 years and you won't see me competing in an Olympic velodrome or finishing a lead pack of a 100 miler. Fourth, this doesn't put into perspective how long the agent has been practicing. For example, the answer is 50 homes. Is there a difference if that was done over 25 years or two years? You bet there is. Number two, how long have you been in business? Similar question to above, just with a different twist. I've worked with agents who've been in business 30 plus years and I wonder how they've stayed in business so long. I've also worked with newer agents who are incredibly attentive, eager, ready to learn, and work very hard. Time in business has nothing to do with skill. Number three, what's your list price to sale price ratio? One of the most useless, overblown statistics out there that tells you absolutely nothing. You've heard the phrase, there are three kinds of lies. Lies, damn lies, and statistics. For starters, a home could have had 10 price drops totaling $50,000 and finally sold at the last list price. That would have a list price to sale price ratio of 100%. Would that be honest? Some agents use a tactic called value range pricing, where they list a home for sale by stating something like, the seller will entertain offers between $500,000 and $550,000. And if it sells for $515,000, they'll say they sold the home for 103% of list price. Did they really? Or did they sell it for 93% of list price? Sometimes a seller wants to test an elevated list price because they believe their home is worth more than their agent suggests. This is just not a reliable way to judge an agent. What questions should you ask? Here are the five critical questions to ask your agent before you hire them. One, are you a dedicated full-time agent? You need to know if the agent you're considering is full-time or part-time. This isn't to say that part-time agent is unskilled. I've worked with some great part-time agents. You just need to understand how available your agent is to attend to your needs and if that agent has the processes and systems in place to ensure a positive outcome. Two, what areas do you serve? The saying that real estate is local is very true. If an agent is ethical, then that agent should know if they will bring value or not. For example, if you're a buyer with children looking in a specific town, your agent should know about the schools, school districts, and extracurricular activities. If you're a seller looking to list, your agent should understand that plus anything specific about your area of town that will provide value that makes your home stand out over the competition. As you already understand, not all neighborhoods or streets have the same perceived value. Local knowledge does matter. Number three, what real estate related education do you have? There are agents that rest on their laurels who don't continue to improve their skill sets. This is no different than any other workplace you've ever been a part of. You know the kind, the kind that just gets by. Is that who you want to hire to represent you in the process of spending a few hundred thousand dollars or more? While it's popular to think that a successful agent lives a dream life of expensive cars and fancy clothes for only a few hours of work, the reality is that successful agents wear many hats. Researcher, marketer, advertiser, technologist, negotiator, coordinator, psychologist, therapist, friend, etc. Anybody who's ever spent time in this business will attest that it's not easy. To top it off, the environment's constantly changing. What worked five years ago probably doesn't work today. A successful agent should be constantly learning and adapting. A successful agent should have a broad skill set and should be looking beyond real estate to make oneself a well-rounded powerhouse. Four, how will you help protect me? This is a question I've never seen in any things to ask your agent list, and it baffles me. Why do you hire an agent? If you're selling, to help market your home, obviously, but why else? Why does a buyer hire an agent? To protect you, to have an impartial third party in the transaction who has the skills and knowledge to prevent you from getting sued or needing to sue. We live in a very litigious society where people like to pass responsibility off to someone else. Your agent should be the trusted advisor to make sure you sleep well at night. This is why hiring the cheapest agent, if you're hiring someone to list your home, is a terrible way to evaluate who you'll hire. You're a buyer looking for a condo. Your agent should understand what's in the condo docs and how to explain it to you. If you're looking for a new construction home, your agent should understand the construction process, how long things take, what information the builder should be providing, etc. 
If you're a seller, your agent should be able to spot and understand how to deal with potential issues with your home so you don't get blindsided. Your agent should have the knowledge specific to your situation and the systems and processes in place to make things smooth as silk. Five, what is your online digital marketing strategy? This is specific to sellers, obviously. You need to understand how your agent's gonna generate buyers for your home. Are they doing the bare minimum of a sign in open houses and waiting for other agents to bring a buyer to them? Maybe that works when the market is hot and homes are flying off the shelf, and that's not a strategy. Are they using current technologies and innovations to give you a competitive advantage? Are they using social media properly since 77% of buyers state that they use social media in their search? Your agent has to market your home both locally and the surrounding areas. The landscape's ever-changing and your agent must have an online digital marketing strategy beyond relying on the likes of Zillow. If you're a buyer looking for a home and would like to interview me to see how I can help you with the process, you can contact me here. If you want to see some of my buyer-specific education materials, you can look here. If you're a seller looking for massive exposure using the latest digital marketing strategies and would like to set up an interview, you can contact me here. Remember. Who you work with matters. So work with someone who cares, has the heart of a teacher, and always puts you first.